Hi everybody, today I'm going to be talking about the Turnigy V-Bar 600 Fly Barless Stabilization System and I'm going to be showing you how I installed it on my HK450 Pro helicopter. This helicopter was originally set up with a mechanical fly bar. I've added this high quality fly barless head from Hobby King. This is basically a copy of the RJX head. You can buy this from Hobby King. Uh, you can get this control box from Hobby. All this stuff's from Hobby King. The instruction manual that comes with the unit from Hobby King uh, which is uh, an electronic manual, is pretty bad. Somebody on RC Groups actually wrote this manual, which is a lot better. They reverse engineered the unit for our benefit. I really appreciate that. There's also very good installation instructions on HeliFreak and RC Groups and other online forums. You can get help from there. The one thing is that these instructions are written for version 3.01. When I boot my unit up, it tells me I have 3.03. .03. So far, I haven't really found much differences, so these instructions are still good. You can download these from the user submitted files section of the Hobby King website at the place where you buy the Turner G600. So make sure you have these instructions to follow along with. I'm not going to go through every minute detail of this, but basically he goes and explains what each one of these parameters does and takes you through a basic setup. He's even got a little instruction sheet you can write down the parameters that you program in. For starters, you need to mount the unit. Now notice that I've mounted the unit here in place of the gyro because this unit has its own tail gyro, so I took the tail gyro off, mounted this in its place. I'm using a piece of hard foam, which is actually servo mounting tape. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that later. There was a problem I ran into. Now I'm going to power the unit on in setup mode. I have the motor wires disconnected for safety. The way you get in the setup mode is you power it on and then you move the rudder stick. So I move the rudder stick over. And you'll notice that the blue light on top of the unit is flashing twice with the blue LED. That means you're in setup mode. In setup mode, you have no rudder control. You do have the swash plate uh, collective and cyclic motion. So you have all of that. You don't have any gyro reaction. This is how you set up the unit in your initial setup. First thing you're going to go through is go through the instruction manual, go through with your control box and set everything to the defaults. You can see a lot of weird settings when this thing comes out of the box from the factory, uh, no telling what's messed up. So set all that to the defaults. Like I said, all these instructions are pretty good. They'll tell you what to set for the defaults. You're going to set your servo speeds, all that sort of thing. Assuming the helicopter was set up properly before with the mechanical flybar, there shouldn't be too much to do here. But, but you're going to make sure that you have your full range of motion in cyclic and collective and that you don't have any binding in any of the linkages with your new head that you've put on. Now I'm going to power on the unit in normal flight mode. They would automatically kick out into this after you do your TX calibration. But to go back in the normal flight mode, I'm just going to reboot the unit without inputting any rudder input. Okay, the system starts up. There is a startup glitch that can occur sometimes where it'll drive one of the servos to full deflection. You want to watch for that. I had a bad crash. It was caused by that. So make sure that you've got full range of motion. And if you've done your setup properly, when you boot up in flight mode, you should have a level swash plate with all of your servo arms at 90 degrees, more or less. Now that we're in normal flight mode, we can work on getting the gyros in the correct orientation. What you're going to do is you're going to go into sensor settings and you can reverse your rudder direction, your aileron gyro direction, and your elevator gyro direction. What you're looking for is to make sure that when you have an external motion or an uncommanded motion on the helicopter like this, I'm not touching the cyclic stick, uh, I'm just moving the helicopter frame, the swash plate moves against that motion to try to stabilize the helicopter. So notice when I kick the tail up, the back of the swash plate drops down, it's trying to counteract that motion. That's the elevator motion right there from the gyro. Now, Side to side would of course be the aileron motion. You'll notice that when I turn the helicopter to the side, the other side of the swash plate drops down, it's trying to counteract that motion. So basically as the helicopter is being moved around by hand here, you're checking to make sure the swash plate moves in the correct direction to counteract those motions. If not, you go in here and you reverse your settings to make sure everything's working right. Also your tail gyro can be set up here also. Make sure you've got your correct tail motion against external influences. Once you've done all of your setup, the next thing you're going to do is go into flight testing and tuning these gains. Now, I've actually found that I just basically left all these at their defaults and they work fine. The only thing that I did differently was I'm using the feedback down to 1 instead of 10 as specified in the instruction manual. These work good for me. You're going to want to tune these to suit your own taste. I'll show you some video of me tuning. What you're going to do is similar to a tail gyro. You increase the gain slowly until it starts to oscillate and wobble real bad. If it starts to wobble and jiggle real bad, you're going to drop the gain back a little bit. So you do the same thing with the tail when you're flying. You increase the gain until you have an oscillation, then you back it off a little bit until you get it flying the way you want. If you have your setup completed, the next thing is going to be flight testing and setting up your trims. It's going to fly a little weird, so 
The instruction manual says you're supposed to use this auto trim mode. In reality, I've done this several times and have not noticed an improvement. If you have a problem where the unit is drifting one way or the other, or the helicopter basically is not maintaining a steady hover without some external input, you might be tempted to use the trim knobs on here back and forth, elevator and uh, aileron, but I found that this leads to undesirable consequences. It causes the unit to think that there is an external command when really you're just trying to trim it out. What I've done is actually use the sub-trim menu, or you can also pop off these links and shorten or lengthen one of these links to make sure that you get a stable hover without having to move the cyclic stick. So either adjusting these links or adjusting the sub-trim, which is pretty much the same thing. Once you've done that, go back in and do a TX calibration again. That sets your midpoint again so that the unit doesn't think that you're still commanding a orientation change. You want to be able to set your trims up and then go back into TX calibration and do a transmitter high, low, and neutral calibration so that the Turner G600 doesn't think that you're making a commanded orientation change. Eventually doing that a couple times, I got this thing dialed in to where it flies really well. That's the way I did the trim. Last thing I wanted to talk about was some glitches and caveats that I had. I've already warned you about the startup problem. When you start up, make sure that all of your servos are roughly 90 degrees like you set them in the setup. Like I said, sometimes when you start up, you'll see a case where one of these servos is just driven all the way to its maximum orientation and the helicopter will not fly right. As soon as you try to take off, you'll have a bad crash. Also, I mentioned, should have mentioned before, make sure you have your training gear on. It's going to save you a lot of trouble when you're doing your setup flights. Last thing I wanted to talk about was a problem I had with this metal mounting plate. There was a problem where no matter what I did, I could not get any fine motion control. It always seemed like there was a little bit of a control lag. I would try to push the stick, it wouldn't move. I had to push the stick more. Then the helicopter would move too much. I'd have to correct back. It always led to this bad problem where I had these kind of pilot-induced oscillations. It was very hard to control. The problem was that I had put this metal mounting plate on with a huge stack of gyro tape, and it was allowing too much motion between the sensor unit here and the frame of the helicopter. So that's why I went back to this single piece of harder foam tape. I had too much motion was allowed between the gyro sensors and the frame of the helicopter and it was causing a lot of wobbling and bad movement. So that's just my advice for you there. I noticed that if I went to full positive pitch or full negative pitch, the tail would kick out a little bit. So I added a little bit of pitch compensation. This keeps the tail in line when doing hard maneuvers. I hope you were able to get this thing set up and working right. Follow these instructions. They'll take you down the right path. And uh, you see my other video of me flying this helicopter with the fly on there. I really like it. So have fun and be safe. Mm -hmm.